assist. But on the other side, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum combined for 53 points. So Cleveland's lost 7 of 12 now since the All-Star break. LeBron James talked about it after the game. It's been a long time since I haven't played, uh, you know, with another All-Star, you know, on my team, you know, so, you know, having Kev out, you know, it's been uh, very, very challenging, obviously, for all of us, you know, uh, you know Kev is, you know, big usage rate on our team, we get the ball when things get chaotic, we can throw it to him in a low, po uh, low post and get some things going, uh, but it's not just Kev, I mean, we miss a double T as well, Rodney went back out again, uh, so, you know, you, you take the... Obviously, you want to win every game, but my approach uh, doesn't change. Well, CC, he said it's been a long time since he's played with another All-Star. How big are the, the how big a deal the, the Cavs struggles without Kevin Love in this lineup? It's huge. It's not only just an All-Star, because we know that LeBron, he would be okay, like when him and Kyrie were, were dealing together. He would be okay with that. But it is it's magnified because, as LeBron said, Tristan Thompson is out. So that leaves a huge hole in their middle. Like they were adjusting to Kevin Love being gone, and now they overworked Larry Nance Jr., so now Larry Nance is hurt. So, yes, that's the reason why he would bring up Kevin Love after a loss like, after a loss like this because of the effect, not only Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, and then now into Nance. So they get dominated in the paint. They really don't have any type of post-up game outside of LeBron. When you start Jeff Green at center, in the NBA? Against like, a team with a real center in Nurkic. And like, people would say, you're not trying to win. Well, LeBron came into the game, and you can see from the results, like, he was locked in. He was trying to carry him himself to victory. But without getting any type of support from a post game, they got dominated in the paint, rebounding 50-34, yeah. in the paint scoring, second chance points, 20-4. to four. Like, it makes it impossible to try to win. As good as LeBron was, you need help. And you definitely need another all-star in this new NBA. You can't win as a solo act. Man, everybody got two all-stars that matter. Hey, Boston has Kyrie and Horford. Toronto's got Lowry and DeRozan. Washington's got Wall and Beal. Sixers have Embiid and Simmons, Simmons fringe all-star. Houston, CP3 and Harden. We know what Golden State's got. Portland, CJ and Dame. Like, go down the list. Oklahoma City, Russ and Paul George, Minnesota. Carl Anthony Towns and Jimmy Buckets. Like, we... Everybody's got two All-Stars, and the Cavs theoretically have two All-Stars. Yes. But they haven't for the last month. They theoretically thought at the beginning of the year they're going to have three All-Stars. But one of them was Isaiah Thomas. He hasn't played like an All-Star anywhere except for in his mind. And so all of a sudden, but here's something LeBron said at the end there that cannot be discounted. He said Rodney went out again. Rodney Hood, now the bugaboo for him in his career since he left Duke, nagging little Injuries. Rodney Hood got dinged. If people weren't watching, this was a late night West Coast game. Dinged in the third quarter. Now he's important now. That was, I believed, the best, the most talent they acquired at the trade Especially deadline. Especially when JR is not playing well. Right. You know, as you would say, maybe. <laughs> the least productive high minutes player in the league that's not a rookie has been JR Smith. And that's without throwing bowls of soup on people. Yeah. That's just with throwing up bricks. Like, I. What is going on right now with the Cavs is frustrating because you can deal with, I'm not going to knock them what happened in the front court. Like Ante right. Zizic is getting minutes. Mm -hmm. He's not an NBA player yet. You, you've had bad luck. Kevin Love breaks his hand. Tristan Thompson hurts his ankle. Larry Nance all of a sudden gets dinged up playing really bigger people than he should be playing. So you can deal with that. Right. I can also deal if, if your shot's not going in. Mm -hmm. That's only one aspect of the game. Right. But if the backcourt, Jr. George Hill, though, especially George Hill and Rodney Hood, who, and I know Hood ended up getting hurt in the second half, but if you're not productive offensively, can you be locked in defensively when the best player in the world with 51,000 minutes in year 15 is doing it all on both ends in a game it'd be nice to have? Because you know what you don't want? You don't want to fall to the six line. You don't want to fall to... Oh, I don't know, potentially seeing Toronto early in the play. You don't want to fall to these places, and that's the position you might be putting yourself in. Look, I've never followed the Cavs this closely until I sat a mm -hmm. foot from you yep. every single morning for three straight hours and talked about the Cavs. The, 
They've never had a lineup that has been intact, successful, except for that run they had in the very beginning of the season. They just haven't had it, and they've been playing with all different guys in all different ways. Now, all of a sudden, you're getting Kevin Love. How confident are both of you that just putting Kevin Love back in is suddenly going to make anyone think, hey, even if he can give you 20 points tonight, he still has to be able to work in the confines of what he got out on the court. The, the reason why you have confidence, or we have confidence in Kevin Love coming back, because the offense and the defense are established around LeBron and Kevin Love. LeBron has confidence playing with Kevin Love. And he has such a good skill set. That is, he can play with his back to the, to the bucket. He can stand at the three-point line. He also cleans up the rebounds. Now, he is not a great individual defender, but he is a good team defender. And he's gotten better. Yeah, so in that, you know those things are constant. It takes away some of that scoring that LeBron doesn't have to do. So I, Kevin Love is a good NBA player. When you lose NBA players like Kevin Love, it's hard to replace them. Now you have all the other injuries, but you put Kevin Love back, you have Tristan Thompson back, and you have Larry Nance Jr. in a backup role. They're going to get stronger in a hurry. And he, the reason I'm confident is because the best lineup when this team's fully healthy, unless you want to go super small, is going to be Hill, Hood, LeBron, Love, Nance. LeBron and Love are the only ones in that lineup with complicated jobs. Hill and Hood spot up at the three-point line and hit your open threes. Larry Nance, catch lobs and go make hustle plays. Like, that's going, it's not, they're not going to run a lot of sets. All right, Kevin Love's going to set a high right. screen for Rodney right. Hood. So right. they're not going to have to get on the same page like that. But, hey, as they say, it's getting late early, fellas. Yeah, I, I can't see any crack. But I can just see a little concern on your face, Nick, about Didn't the cat. Didn't know where first you were going with first that. First time all year. Just, no. a, just a, we good. We just good. wait till I ask him again if he's worried. <laughs> uh, moving on. You guys remember that ever so brief moment when we doubted Tiger Woods? That's hilarious. Uh, Tiger building on his momentum from last week, finishing the first eight, the Arnold Palmer Invitational, four under, four strokes behind the leader. He even nailed a 71-foot putt. This from the guy who's only 11 months removed from spinal fusion surgery. CC, how impressed were you with Tiger yesterday? Very impressed. Only two times this season Tiger's played back-to-back -back weeks. We know what he did last week at the Valspar um, Championship there in Tampa. Finished in second. Best finish on tour in a long time. But to, we know that he had to follow that up with some practice and then be able to get back on the course with, I believe, the strongest field that we've seen um, thus far in, on the PGA Tour. 24 of the top 50 players playing in a tournament on a course at Bay Hill that, 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 he, that Tiger Woods loves and had great success on. So for me, in getting a double bogey, which he hit the ball out of bounds, um, had a, a kind of a, a ruling, ruling that was questionable because they had a, a newly um, planted fence that was, was not part of the golf course, that that ruling did not go in his favor. But to be able to shoot four under with the type of leaderboard and after having a double bogey. And when he played the course, the conditions were the toughest they were all day. So I'm very, very pleased with, with the result that he got in shooting four under. When you hear he's four off the lead, it, it sounds like it wasn't as good as it really was. A, when he went to the clubhouse, he, temporarily he was the leader. It quickly, yes. it, five under became the leader. And he could have easily been six under. Right, and that held for a long time. The afternoon group had, as CC mentioned, easier con conditions. And the one guy at eight under, Chris showed me this this morning, Henrik Stenson, he had 20 putts yesterday. He was unconscious. That's absurd. So, yes. like, the, really, six under, essentially, all things being equal, should be where the leader's at. And Tiger's at four under despite the double bogey. He took care of the par fives, four under on the four par fives. He mentally took care of himself post-double double bogey, bogey. Mm. not allowing that to derail his round. And he had back-to-back. On the, his approach on six and then the putt on seven. And keep in mind, he did the back nine first. So that was holes 15 and 16 for him of the day. The approach on six was the best shot anyone hit all day. And the putt on seven was remarkable. And so for me, man, this Tiger being back means one thing for me. Golf exists again. Like, the reason I watch golf is for this guy. And I know I'm not the only one. So I'm as excited as I am for the NCAA tournament this weekend. So I am that excited to watch this. 
You see, you use the right. Oh, you've been like a bear, right? I've been hibernating. Golf's been hibernating. I've been hibernating. I finally, oh, finally waking up. Watch some golf. What's it? It's too early. What? It's too early for the big stretch of the jacket coming up. Listen, America agrees with you. He he, mm. st he started playing golf six months ago, basically. Look how close he came last week. Look where he is today. And guess what? Yes. Vegas has him has the odds on favor to win the Masters, which means what? I mean, the country's on his side. People want him to succeed. And the way you are being drawn back to golf, I think everyone is as well. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a great weekend. We got the NCAA tournament. We got, oh man, there's going to be some upsets. Nick Wright, whatever he's picking, guys go the, the other way. way. Tiger Woods, we need him to stay in contention yes. for a Saturday moving day and getting into the top five on Sunday. Man, the only thing that would throw me more on Monday than at least Villanova still being in the tournament, so I have one of my championship teams left, yes. is Tiger Woods having won a tournament. Oh, man, you, you said your standard's too low, man. We got to go. Have a wonderful Powerball, weekend, man. guys. We'll see.